Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This time I thought I would count down my top 11 favourite vampires in film and television. Let's not waste any time, let's get through this list. So starting the list at number 11 is the vampire Merlot from the movie 30 Days of Night. Portrayed by Danny Hicks, Marlowe is the leader of the vampires in this movie adaptation of the comic book of the same name. In the comic book, Marlowe is known as Marlowe Roderick, but in the film, his last name is left unknown. Marlowe and his group of vampires are lethal as they take over Barrow, Alaska. The vampires in this movie are ruthless and animalistic. It's all about the thrill of the hunt. When it comes to the most vicious vampires in cinema, I would definitely have Marlowe and these vampires higher on the list. Now when it comes down to 80s vampires, David played by Kiefer Sutherland usually ranks quite high on most people's lists, but I have another 80s vampire on my list who I think is much cooler, but I'll get onto him later. David and his biker gang of vampires cruise around Santa Cruz County in search of fresh blood. Now I'm sure we have all seen The Lost Boys, but for those who haven't, spoilers ahead. When you see David and his gang, you believe that David is the leader of the vampires, and while he definitely does look the part, it is in fact Max, who is the head vampire, who comes across as completely normal until the climax of the movie. It's a great twist. In 1977, the BBC aired an adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. This time, the Count was played by French actor Louis Jourdain. Surprisingly, out of all the Dracula movies disregarding any sequels, this version of the Dracula story is the closest to Bram Stoker's novel, next to Francis Ford Coppola's version. It's not a page-by-page -page accurate telling of the story, but that aside, it remains the most faithful. What I've noticed upon re-watching this version of Dracula is that Louis Jourdain is very calm as the Count, unlike Christopher Lee and other actors that have played Dracula before and after. In this adaptation, Dracula is dressed all in black, but when you see him, he's not an old man who later drinks blood to become younger. Many Dracula movies seem to miss out this major part of the story, but when Louis Jourdain has the red contacts in and blood dripping from his mouth, he looks absolutely fantastic. Coming in at number 8 is Kurt Barlow from Salem's Lot. When looking at Mr. Barlow in the 1979 TV adaptation of Stephen King's novel Salem's Lot, you can clearly see that his makeup was inspired by Max Schreck's own vampire in Nosferatu. I think it's safe to say that Nosferatu is one of the most, if not the most, recognisable vampires in cinema history. But going back to Mr. Barlow, Reginald is absolutely terrifying as Kurt Barlow, with his piercing yellow demonic eyes and fangs that are placed at the front of his mouth. He's just the stuff of nightmares. He's definitely not a romantic figure, that's for sure. Mr. Barlow has only one desire, and that is to feed. <laughs> Now, I can definitely see a lot of people, when counting down their favourite vampires in movies and television, putting Bela Lugosi in their top 5 or maybe even top 3, but hear me out. Universal's adaptation of the Dracula story became the first sound Dracula movie in 1931, much like Frankenstein as they were both released the same year. After Max Schreck, there wasn't really an actor that became so recognisable as Dracula. That was until the character was played by Hungarian actor Bela Lugosi. Nowadays, Bela Lugosi alongside Max Schreck as Nosferatu has become one of the most recognisable vampires in film. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Whenever somebody impersonates Dracula, they always seem to do an impression of Bela Lugosi's Dracula. Many people seem to think that Dracula's cloak was the now iconic red and black when in actual fact it was black on the outside and silver on the inside. This was the first Dracula movie that introduced the iconic vampire with the classic look of slipped black hair and the classic suit. Whilst on the topic of Universal's Dracula, an honourable mention goes to the Spanish version released the same year. It's a superior movie in terms of the way it was shot, and Dracula was played by Carlos Villares. But in time, Bela Lugosi would go on to be the more iconic actor to play the character. After all, he was buried in his iconic cloak. In 1992, director Francis Ford Coppola made his own version of the Dracula tale. The film had a big budget and well-known actors. 
Dracula this time around was played by Gary Oldman, and what I love most about this version of Dracula is that we see him take many different forms. When we first see him, he's not exactly the Dracula we know, instead he's Vlad III, Prince of Wallachia, better known as Vlad the Impaler. Bram Stoker drew inspiration from Vlad in order to create Dracula. The second time we see Dracula in this movie, he's an old man, much like in the novel, although he looks absolutely nothing as he was described in the book. He also turns into a wolf creature, a bat creature, and finally a younger version of himself. Finally, he can take the form of mist. Now what many people seem to forget when making a Dracula movie is that in the novel, Dracula can walk in the daylight, but his powers are weakened, and the movie depicts this. This movie is not a page by page adaptation, but much like the 1977 BBC adaptation, it's one of the most faithful adaptations out there. Beginning the top 5 of my list is Jerry Dandridge from the movie Fright Night, released in 1986. When it comes to 80s vampires, there is no better vampire than Jerry Dandridge, played by Chris Sarandon. He's charming, charismatic, he has the looks, a fantastic dress sense, but he can instantly change when becoming a creature of the night. When Jerry moves in next door to the Brewster family, Charlie becomes very suspicious and begins to spy on Jerry, suspecting that he is a vampire. Charlie seeks help from his friend Ed and horror movie host Peter Vincent. At first, Peter Vincent is not convinced that Jerry is a vampire until he joins Charlie, Ed and Charlie's girlfriend Amy at Jerry's house. Peter notices that Jerry doesn't cast a reflection and Jerry soon discovers that at least two people in the group have discovered his deep dark secret. My two favourite scenes with Jerry are when he gets invited into Charlie's house by his mother. His introduction is absolutely fantastic. My other favourite scene is the climax of the movie when Jerry bursts through the window and confronts Charlie and Peter Vincent. And finally, in 1988 there was a sequel to Fright Night which focused on Jerry's sister, who is also a vampire. In 2020, Mark Gatiss and Stephen Moffat brought their version of the classic Dracula tale to the small screen. The series has three episodes, and Dracula this time around is played by Danish actor Claes Bang. Now I had never heard of Claes Bang, and upon first watching, I thought that he was a good choice to play Dracula, and I still do. So, considering that I was not familiar with his work, and to see him portray Dracula, I'd say that was a pretty good start. This Dracula is definitely not a faithful adaptation, but manages to take certain points from Stoker's novel and adapt them for the series. When we first see the Count, he's old as he greets Jonathan Harker to his home, but over time he consumes Harker's blood and Dracula becomes younger and he also speaks with an English accent the more blood he consumes. Throughout the series we begin to learn why Dracula fears all the classic tropes, the cross, the sun, etc. Spoilers ahead if you haven't seen the series. As it turns out, the sunlight, reflections and the fear of the crosses are not weaknesses. They are habits that Dracula has accustomed to believe are curses over the centuries. The thing that the Count fears most is death. So by the end, I think it made Dracula a tragic character, which didn't bother me at all. With all that said, Clay's Bang is a great Dracula. He's intimidating, charming and humorous at times. I realise that this series isn't going to be everyone's favourite telling of the classic tale, but for what it's worth, I really enjoyed it. Portrayed by Thomas Ian Griffith, Juan Valek is a 600 year old master vampire and the main antagonist of the film. Before becoming a vampire, Valek was a Catholic priest who turned against the church and led the Bohemian peasants in an uprising. He was later captured and burned at the stake. But when resurrected he began walking at night, he killed the living to drink their blood. Valak is the most powerful vampire of his kind, and if that's not enough, throughout this movie he is hunting for a black cross which will allow him to walk in the daylight when a ritual is complete. James Woods portrays Jack Crow. When he was a young boy his parents were killed by vampires, so when he became older he became a vampire hunter and is determined to end their reign of terror. But going back onto Valak, one of my favourite scenes featuring Valak is when he wipes out an entire motel of people single handedly. It's a gruesome sight. Also, not to mention his appearance is very simple but amazing. He is dressed entirely in black from head to foot without a single speck of colour. See what I did there? If you haven't seen John Carpenter's Vampires, I highly recommend it. Now we move on to a vampire which I cannot talk about enough. 
Without a doubt, Count Orlok is the most important vampire on this list, portrayed by Max Schreck in the 1922 silent horror classic Nosferatu. Still to this day, Count Orlok is considered as the creepiest vampire to ever appear on film. There are so many memorable scenes in this classic film, just to name a few, Count Orlok approaching the doorway, Orlok's shadow creeping over the terrified Hutter, Orlok on the ship, and most famous of all, the shot of Count Orlok creeping up the staircase. The picture was the first to loosely adapt Bram Stoker's Dracula into a major motion picture, but Stoker's widow wouldn't allow the rights to be given, therefore the characters' names had to be changed. It's crazy to think that Nosferatu almost became a lost horror movie since all copies were destroyed, but one. There is no doubt that F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu is one of the most important vampire movies, if not the most important horror movie of all time. Which of course means my favourite vampire of all time is Christopher Lee's portrayal as Count Dracula in the Hammer horror movies. Christopher Lee is without a doubt the actor who has played the iconic vampire more times than any other actor, in total 10 times. 11 in fact if you want to include his very short uncredited role alongside Peter Cushing in the 1970s comedy movie One More Time. Lee played the Count 7 times for Hammer, those are the Dracula movies that which he is best known for and three more times for movies outside of Hammer, the first being in 1959, a movie called Uncle Was a Vampire. The second time he would play Dracula outside of Hammer was in a 1970 movie titled Count Dracula, in which Lee portrayed a more faithful version of the character from Bram Stoker's novel. And the last time that Christopher Lee played Count Dracula outside of Hammer was in 1974 in a French comedy movie titled Dracula and Son. But the Hammer movies are where Christopher Lee really gets to shine as Count Dracula, Funny enough, Christopher Lee hated doing the sequels because they weren't faithful to Bram Stoker. He believed that Hammer were writing Dracula in the story lastly. This all started in Dracula Prince of Darkness when Lee refused to say his dialogue because the script writers were not using Stoker's words. So throughout the entire film, Lee doesn't say a word, he just stands there and hisses. But nonetheless, he is absolutely amazing as this character. Whenever someone says the word Dracula, most people might think of Bela Lugosi, but I will forever think of Christopher Lee. He was the Dracula I grew up with, therefore he is my all time favourite Dracula. It's the Hammer movies that introduced the character of Dracula as a bloodthirsty vampire. Hammer were not afraid to shy away from showing blood on the screen. In fact in the first Hammer Dracula movie, the opening sequence shown is blood dripping on Dracula's tomb. Universal Pictures had Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi, and Hammer had Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Cushing only appeared in three Hammer Dracula films with Christopher Lee, he plays Van Helsing, and he is hands down the best actor to play the character. They both would do many more movies together over the years, with and without Hammer Studios involvement. Overall, Christopher Lee may not have liked playing Dracula over the years, but he will forever be my favourite vampire in all of cinema. So that is my top 11 vampires in film and television. Let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me. Pop your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. On that note, I will see you in the next video and as always, take care.